We're going to take a look at our basic gouge sharpening system here. Uh, and to begin with, the setup, uh, there's a notch in this that I line up with that hole. That gives us this basic bowl gouge shape. It's a good basic grind for a lot of general turning. Uh, a couple of other things in the setup is I need to get the tool at a uniform distance out from the, the face of the bracket out to the end of the gouge. It really isn't important the distance exactly, it's just that it be uniform every time you put the tool in. And then the other thing that I have to do is as I put this tool in, I slide the arm in or out by unlocking this to get the bevel to lay on the tool. So if I have a steeper angle, I'd move this in. If it's more blunt, I would slide it out to accomplish that. Again, I do that just to get the bevel on the wheel. That's not how I change the shape. We'll get to that in a few minutes. So what's this collar down here for then? The collar is there so that initially when you set this up on your grinder, you set it so when you put a tool in, that it lands either on center or slightly above, not below center. That could be dangerous. It could suck the tool in. Is this uh, interchangeable with other bases? It will fit in other bases, yes, that are out there. So you can use ours or another if you already have one. What's the advantage of having the system at all? Well, the big advantage is that we've trapped this so that it rotates around that center line. And on most of the systems, you simply have a tool that goes into a pocket. And that gives you lots of freedom, but when you're first learning especially, you're, you're concentrating on so many things, it's very easy as you come around to be trying to watch this and the tool can slip off the wheel, which can be mm -hmm. very dangerous. So this has trapped it and it cannot come off the wheel that way. So one less thing you've got to concentrate on. Exactly. It makes it much easier to teach a beginner with this system. Uh, they get great results very, very quick. How easy is this system to use once you've got it set up? Okay, let's take a look. We just turn this on, light pressure, not pushing against the wheel, just resting it there, and I simply rotate around, come back around and do the same on the other side, moving it slowly, and that's it. If this takes more than 15 or 20 seconds on the wheel, you're doing something wrong. It just shouldn't take long at all. Uh, now, if I'm reshaping a tool or something, that's different. But just to resharpen your tool, it's 15 or 20 seconds and back to turning. So this works on all gouges, spindle gouges, uh, bowl gouges? Yes, on, on any of those gouges with a fingernail grind, not your roughing gouges, of course. Now, Dave, uh, often when I'm turning it across the bottom of a bowl, mm -hmm. I like to use a much blunter angle. Uh, sure. makes it a little bit easier. That's the tool I tend to use. Right. Would you still be able to use that? Yes, we can use the same thing. I'll just I'll take this tool out. We'll put that one in and look at what we have to do to make this tool uh, work in here. It's fairly simple. I'm going to slide this out and measure the length here and get that set so that uh, I have my mark to get the, this uniform distance again. Now I'm going to have to move the slide arm in this case because mm -hmm the bevel angle is much blunter to get across the bottom of your bowl. So I just need to, to adjust that. We'll get the wheel stopped here. And so I'm going to slide this out until that bevel is just laying right on the wheel and lock that. It looked to me like to get a blunter angle, you slide the, exactly. wheel, you slide the this, arm out. Slide the arm out <clears throat> and that moves that tool down and makes it more blunt on the end. Now, as we come around, you see that's going to lay right on there. Yep just fine. So, so you didn't, I didn't have need, to change that hole. I did not all. have to change that hole. And that collar didn't to, have to change either. No. The collar, once it's again initially set up, should never change. But, you know, this shape is more short than it is on this one. Mm -hmm. And that's simply due to the fact that we've changed that bevel angle so greatly. And that Perhaps that this is that. just the other extreme. Yes. Uh, more okay. swept back this way as well as a steeper angle here. Right, and a lot of folks like that long swept back angle. And again, fairly simple changes here. I'll put this in. Uh, again, I'll get that length set here uh, so that it's uniform. And then I have to make one other adjustment now. 
uh, earlier, we looked at the notch. Now, which way would I move this to make that longer grind? Intuitively, what do you think would happen there? Would I raise this handle or lower the handle? You would raise the handle. You would raise the handle. A lot of people think that you would lower it, that that would make it come around further. But in fact, what we want to do is raise it so that now that hole and the notch are about halfway off. In other words, I've moved it to about the center of that notch on there. And again, I have to readjust for our bevel difference. So we'll loosen that, slide this back, and get it so that that bevel rests on the wheel. Lock it in place. And now, watch what happens when I rotate it around. Mm -hmm. Do you see how it matches that exactly? We get right on there, all the way around both sides. And even with That's, that swept way back, it's still staying right in the center of that wheel, isn't it? Exactly. It stays right on the wheel. It doesn't you know, run off or anything. It, it's, it's one of those things that that little change here makes a big difference in what you get up there in the end of the tool. And there are a lot of folks that just don't understand that. With those other systems, because it's not locked in, they manipulate it to make it give this kind of grind, but it's, they have to change ex how they're swinging the tool and be real uh, exaggerated in the motion compared to reproducing this grind with that system. So when you come, into, uh, come to this tool with a, a, a grind that you've already done, it seems like it's very, very quick to read just to touch it up again Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely. We don't have to adjust anything. Yeah. You know, if I'm using this same tool over and over, I don't have to move the arm in and out. I don't have to change this at all. Once I'm locked in on the tool that I'm using at the time, slip it into the right length and sharpen it and back to turning. So it's very, very consistent. Very consistent and very quick. Great. So that's our sharpening system. It, uh, it's kind of unique in the market. It's the only one that captures this and locks it in place. Like and that it has a rubber, rubber grommet here? Or does that? Yeah, uh, two purposes. <laughs> one, it, it's because it's uh, softer, it grips the tool really well so the tool won't slide in there. And it's broad so that it allows you to do even those massive bowl gouges as well. <laughs>